Hey everyone, Pastor Sam, Pastor Dawson for another midweek conversation as we talk about this past Sunday's message, talk about this week's readings, things like that. Um, so yeah, this past Sunday we were looking at Exodus where we've just come out of the, the Red Sea, we've come out of Moses' song, and the people are grumbling again. So God provides quail, he provides manna, uh, but really rather than just looking at that as a miraculous provision, which it certainly is, in Exodus 16 you see a really beautiful lesson on abiding both with what the word grumbling really means and I'm not giving away too much so if you are a little unsure of what I'm talking about go watch the sermon or listen to it um, but we looked at what grumbling really means and then we looked at that juxtaposed with where God's design is for his people to be instead mm -hmm. uh, so before we get into Jeremiah 17 before we get into Hebrews 4 any mm -hmm. questions thoughts follow-ups from the sermon I did have the thought that so this is a very important passage um, in terms of messianic foreshadowing. Mm. Jesus even calls himself the bread of life. Yep. And just the thought I had that's very interesting, little side note from the passage is that throughout the passage, I think it's three or four times, it's so that they would know that God is Lord, all mm -hmm. caps Lord. And then you flash forward to John and they say, give us a sign of Moses, because Moses gave us the bread. Yep. And it just shows how quickly, even on the topic of rest, how quickly we can attribute rest to the wrong things. Even a Sabbath day, it's like, well, I ended up getting that day off, you know, just in my weekly schedule rather than attributing it to God's design for rest. It, you know, we can't be like the people and be like, yeah, my boss gave me the day off. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, you're attributing it to a human, you know? Yep. Yeah, we, we very quickly seek to and kind of fall susceptible to explaining away God. Yeah. Like we, we very easily explain away God. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. It's a great messianic. Uh, I mean, Exodus, Leviticus, some of those books that tend to get like, oh, well, those are just the old history books. Like, no, mm. there are some of the most beautiful, poignant messianic foreshadowings in those books. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool that you tied it into that. Um, yeah, because I was even just, I think I, that was like one sentence, like, oh, hey, by the way, <laughs> yeah. bread of life, like bread from heaven. Yeah. Jesus says I'm the bread from heaven. Like, Yeah, but if, as we're reading through it, it's important to emphasize what the people themselves misunderstood mm -hmm. so that we don't make that same mistake. Yeah. You know, they attributed it to Moses. We can't attribute it to Moses. Yep. We have to see that it's the Lord. Yep. Which I think is really interesting. Oh, man, you saying that just triggered a thought. Like, even when the people grumble against Moses mm. and Moses, so like not only in our good, but even in our negative, right? Like, so mm. like people grumble against Moses and Moses is like, whoa, 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 you're not grumbling against me. You're grumbling yeah. against the Lord. When, like, he, when he literally says like, what does this have to do with me? Yeah, <laughs> what does this have to do with me? Like you're grumbling about God. You're, you're crediting me when the credit should go to God. You're pretending like you're not criticizing God when you are criticizing <laughs> yeah, God. Like, like we are, we are so quick is... to remove God from the equation. Yeah. Uh, and that can be in either direction, which yeah, is, exactly. is really interesting. Um, yeah, and something to guard in our own life, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, okay, so Jeremiah 17, Hebrews 4, dealer's choice. Which one are you going to start with? I say Jeremiah. Start with Jeremiah. Okay. I, I love the book of Jeremiah anyway. Uh, but this chapter especially, I, I think it's so striking. The, you can kind of divide Jeremiah 17 into three sections. There's a rebuke for sin. So God is, is rebuking the sin of his people. Mm -hmm. And then Jeremiah is grieving over that sin. And he cries out to the Lord for rescue and deliverance and redemption. And you know what I mean? Like, hey, here's the problem of sin. Here's the plead to God. And God's response to all of this is, okay, honor the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Like observe the Sabbath as I told you to. Honor as holy what I declared holy, follow my standards. That's the answer to this. And God acknowledges at the, at the very end of Jeremiah 17, he's like, look, if you choose not to, then there's going to continue to be problems. Mm. Like if, if you choose to continue to reject what I have designed for you, what I have laid out for you, there's going to continue to be issues. If you follow it, there will be blessings. Mm. And so I, you know, I've said this in, I don't know how many sermons, how many midweek videos, like God gave us, it, it's like an open book test. You know what I mean? Like God's, <laughs> yeah. God's not playing mind games with us. Like we've got to figure out this puzzle. He's like, hey, follow the holy standards I've set for you. If you do, blessings, things mm. go well. 
if you don't, things go poorly. Mm -hmm. And then we don't and things go poorly and we're like, where did this come from? I'm so shocked. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so I love Jeremiah 17 because it's really bluntly laid out of what is the solution when, when Jeremiah's like, Lord, deliver us, rescue us, save us, hear us. Mm -hmm. God's response is, honor as holy what I have said is holy. Yeah, and it makes me think it was a good point from the sermon when you talked about how we wouldn't neglect this standard under different circumstances. And I think we forget that rest is a standard and a calling. It's not a offer. No. You know, we remember Matthew 11 and we say, oh, well, you know, he's offering. It's a free call. We neglect the Old Testament where it is a standard set for the people. And Jesus is offering it to all people to continue as a standard, yes. which is something we'll see in Hebrews 4, that it is still a standard, even in the church era. Bingo. And that, uh, dude, you hit exactly why I wanted to do Jeremiah and Hebrews, because you're right, it does, when you're transitioning from Old Testament to New Testament, some of the language starts to be like, okay, well, it was a command, but now is it just an invitation? Mm. And then you get to Hebrews 4, and you're like, no, no, this is still it's part still of, a command. like, this is still part of the call on God's people. Mm. Um, but yeah, I love some of the verses that, that really stood out to me. You know, one of the questions we asked in the sermon of why do we struggle with the Sabbath? And, and I said, I think sometimes some people wrestle with the Sabbath is because it's an issue of trust. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm not working, if I'm not producing, will I have enough? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like part of resting is being able to trust God, yeah. is being able to say, okay, I trust the Lord enough to rest mm -hmm. and not go, go, go. Jeremiah 17, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit. So if we wrestle with Sabbath because of trust, Jeremiah 17 speaks to this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like uh, it, it talks to some of the reasons why we do struggle with observing what God has called us to. Mm -hmm. um, so I really love that. Uh, I, I, yeah, Jeremiah is just it's such a great book. And yeah, it's a great I chapter. The, I love the concept of it being about trust and so fully about trust because it is a command. But it makes me think of the end of Jude where he says, now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling. Mm. And so it's always that, like, we can't just Sabbath correctly in our flesh and in nope. our humanity because we will stumble yep. and we'll fall and we'll neglect it. And that's why you always have to go back to that concept of trusting God because they did stumble. He gave them the command yep. and they went out on the seventh day anyway. Yep. And they went to, like, try and provide. Yep. And it wasn't there. Which goes right back to the whole other component of where we're called to abide, like inactive dependence. Where mm -hmm. It's like, okay, Lord, not only am I trying to abide and rest, I'm also asking you to enable me to rest. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm depending on you for this obedience to work out. Yeah, like, we don't naturally have this inclination because we naturally want to produce and we want to compare ourselves and we want and we want to earn any number. Of we things. want to we want to self affirm. We mm -hmm. want to yeah, there's there's a number of causes for why we drive like that mm -hmm. and so you do you need that dependence on the lord to slow us down and mm -hmm. to you know i mean i talk to people constantly I, I had great conversations with people after the the service sunday even and when we talked about the guilt of resting you know i mean like mm -hmm. okay i'm also depending on god to still my heart so that when i'm mm -hmm. resting i'm not wrestling with feelings of shame and guilt and you know mm -hmm. oh my neighbor's better than me because he's he's working and i'm not like yeah there's there's so much a component of all of this intertwined where it's like okay i'm obeying and i'm abide, abiding in obedience i'm abiding mm -hmm. in rest and yet even in that i'm still like lord please sustain this because i'm still dependent on you mm -hmm. for this to be holy yeah uh, yeah and that really that ought to be our stance because if we're even if we are correctly taking a day of rest, if it's not in accordance with what God has laid out for us, it is simply that. It's yep. just a day off. Yep. When it becomes a Sabbath is when we are doing it in the humble admission that we need it yep. and we need God to sustain it. Yep. And it's in accordance with his will. Yep. Because otherwise it is just sitting down and taking a day off. Absolutely. You know? it, yeah, if it's... If it's just going through the motions to go through the motions, that's radically different from 
doing it to truly abide in the Lord and in holiness mm. and in and worship. I could not agree more. Um, all right. Any other thoughts on Jeremiah 17 or ready to go new? I'm getting ready to go New Testament. Ready to go New Testament. Hebrews 4, yeah. uh, a chapter that you could spend two months on. <laughs> um, so if you're reading through Hebrews 4 and you've got questions about other stuff, absolutely send them our way. But really the main idea that we did talk about in the sermon uh, that hopefully we, we see as we read through Hebrews 4 together, um, temporary rest should remind us of the mm. restful nature of salvation. So Hebrews 4 mm. was, was included in this week's reading to be like, hey, one, I hope you remember the beauty of salvation and you can't earn it. Mm -hmm. And two, allow the piece of that to make you feel a little less guilty about resting, resting. in the temporary. Yeah. And I think it's, it's so evident because the writer of Hebrews literally uses rest and salvation interchangeably yep. in this entire chapter. And he's comparing the people who are not able to enter rest and that's how he's using it to illustrate salvation so we should be when we are resting in the lord that should be the greatest joy because it is the greatest reality of he's allowed us to rest he will allow us to rest yeah you know he, yeah you talk about the now and he not has yet tension. he has saved us and he will save us dude and it's it's illustrated through rest yep i get a day of rest i will get a day of rest you know yep yeah, uh, uh, that's exactly it. It's that now, not yet. He has, I love how you just said that. We can rest now mm. because we will rest eternally. Mm. He has saved us. He will save us. That's, mm. that's the exact parallel between rest and salvation. And it's, uh, it's humbling. It's, uh, I, I think you said joy producing. Mm. Right? Like it should. It should fill us with joy. It should fill us with, you know, grace fills us with joy. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, grace extends to the ability to rest and yeah. to follow the model of our Lord and, and to follow the call of our, our King. Um, yeah, Hebrews 4, just, just really, really cool. And again, verse 11, let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. So once again, you see, this goes back to Exodus, where we're talking about it's a command. Like, mm -hmm. rest is never just optional. It's mm -hmm. like, no, there's, there's obedience in this. Yeah, don't um, fall into that active disobedience of yep. neglecting rest yep uh either in terms of salvation or in terms of sabbath yeah in terms of the day-to-day -day rest yeah hebrews 4 really cool chapter um and i love that he taught ties it back to you know joshua and he's like because mm -hmm. these are people we have to understand the cultural kind like these are people who like joshua would have been you know one of the heroes of the faith mm -hmm. right yeah. like wow this incredible leader even when everybody else fell away joshua said and it's mm -hmm. like if joshua had given them rest God would not have spoken of another day later on. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, well, you think Joshua was somehow better of a leader than God? Like, <laughs> yeah. this hero of yours couldn't even begin to give you the meaningful rest like God can, yeah. uh, which is really, really cool. Um, so really love Hebrews 4, love Jeremiah 17, love mm -hmm. how the, the two play off each other. Yeah, Hebrews 4, over because I read it last week because I was just reading through Hebrews, and then you mentioned it again. And what it reminded me of both times was that as believers, I think that's something we struggle with because humanly, eternity is a t like, terrifying thought for a lot of people. Yeah, for a lot of people. But as believers, we are meant to have a sweet view of eternity and mm -hmm. we are meant to dwell on it. And Hebrews 4 very casually swip swaps between, okay, getting a day of rest now and eyes on eternity. And it reminds me of a lot of old hymns because old hymns will have a couple... I don't know musical terms, so this was a poor, versus poor illustration. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll have a couple verses on the here and now, and then they'll usually close in this big, triumphant manner, pointing to heaven and focusing on heaven. And yeah, I love that was old, very I love much old hymns for that because it makes me look on heaven just very casually and very in a very applicable way where I can put on that song and it points my eyes down the road of eternity. Yeah, which, oh man, I mean, you tie that back to two sermons ago, right? Like the intentionality of music and the mm -hmm. music we listen to and the music we use as worship, rather. Uh, but you're right, that that's a huge component of those those hymns. And, and I love that in those hymn writers' minds, this was like the logical conclusion. Right? Yeah. Like, we are not just temporary, mm -hmm. we are also eternal. We're not just eternal, we're also temporary. And, and so mm -hmm. it's like, hey, look, temporary, celebrate this, recognize this, mm -hmm. and then don't forget about eternity. 
Yeah. And then the exact same thing applies to rest. Yeah. yeah. I can enter his rest. I am entering his rest regularly and I will enter his rest yep. eternally. It's, it is that, that beautiful illustration of justified, sanctified, sanctified glorified. glorified, which can only be found in Christ. And to bring it all the way back to Exodus 15, only Christ, only God mm -hmm. can provide the rest in the short term as well, uh, which is all about that holy dependence, right? That, mm -hmm. that relentless pursuit of, I want to be more like Jesus, that relentless pursuit of, I want to conform to God's standards, that relentless yeah. pursuit of, I want to be holy. Yeah. I mean, talk about an illustration of that. I don't want the bread with worms in it. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, right? Like, I don't want the rotted bread. <laughs> yeah. None of us would eat that. That's all I'm going to get if I go out yep. outside of his means, you know? One of my favorite questions that I think applies in so many different ways is asked of Jesus' resurrection. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Yeah. <laughs> Why are we looking for rest among the restless world? <laughs> yeah. Find rest in a restful Savior. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Any other thoughts? Mm -mm. Cool. All right. That was a midweek conversation. As always, if you have questions, if you have points, we'd love to hear from you, interact with you on this. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Hey everyone, Pastor Sam, thanks so much for joining us on a midweek conversation. We hope it challenged you, encouraged you, kept this past Sunday's message at the front of our hearts and minds throughout the week. As always, if you have questions or comments you'd like us to discuss, please let us know. Otherwise, you can find more content like this here on our channel. Make sure you subscribe to stay up to date, and we'll see you next time.